We're wrapping up another year in the Premier League, so it's only right we sit down and get about 15,000 likes. That's part one. And part two, we've got to analyse the players and pick 11 that are going to be the team of the season. Hey, I'll tell you what, Theo, I'm not going to start just yet because there's somebody out there who hasn't subscribed. Can you see them? Yeah, I can see them right through the screen right there. You haven't clicked it. Why is that subscribe button red? It should be grey. Oh, it's grey now. Oh, brilliant. Oh, Excellent. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, mate. i tell you what, the first thing, that is yeah. a beautiful shirt. I know, Theo. it is a great shirt. I love yours too. But enough of the waffle. Let's start with the goalkeeper. Okay? Well, no, gonna, no. I'm going to waffle some more because I can't believe you're in England. You've been travelling all over the shop. Hey, look, when I'm here, you've got to catch me. I'm not going to be able to I've got a flight in about 10 minutes. Come on, speed up, come on. Goalkeeper first. And it would be so easy, wouldn't it? Go for Edison or Allison. You know, they've got the most clean sheets. They're brilliant goalkeepers. Yep. But they've got superb defences in front of them. So I've gone with Jose Sarr at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Mm. 11 clean sheets this season. 106 saves. That is number three after Melier at Leeds and De Gea at Man United. I nearly went De Gea. I nearly went to hair too because for Manchester United, they don't deserve any player that goes in the team of the season apart from their goalkeeper who saved them so many times from having a rubbish defence, from being cut open through one pass. But I agree with you, Jose Sarr, simply because for Wolves this season, he's had the most saves inside the box, which is 78. 28 runs out more than anybody else. And yes, he might not have the most saves like Meslier, but his save percentage is key and he has the best rating for any goalkeeper. We're talking about a man that came from some Greek club. Like, yeah. I forgot, I think it was Olympiakos. No one really knew about him and he simply stood out. So we agree on the goalkeeper position. Who's been the best left back in the Premier League this season? I reckon it's Jao Cancelo, Theo. I okay. absolutely love this player. What I love about him, his versatility. Mm. I reckon he could play left midfield, centre forward. I think if you put the gloves on him, be goalkeeper. Mate, he's, he's just, just brilliant. Excellent. I mean, one goal, nine assists, 16 clean sheets. Great stats, but I love how he loves to get forward. But what about Robertson? He's got more assists, more key passes. He's created more for the team from left back position. He's had one of the best years he's ever had as a footballer. You've got to consider him an option. You do. You know what, Theo? I could have had the whole back four as Liverpool, but I've tried to look beyond Liverpool. Yeah. So that's why I've gone with Jao Cancelo, one of my favourite players. And I agree with you. It's that versatility. Playing at left back, but he's right footed. He could play play either wing back he could go into central midfield if he wanted to he's got that in his locker he's got more than double the amount of tackles as Robertson as well yes. which people don't realize he's the perfect balanced left back Pep loves to play roulette but he doesn't with his Portuguese fullback now that says something doesn't it I don't think he's the best left back in the Premier League I think he's the best left back in the world oh we agree centre backs now and it has to be Antonio Rudiger Ooh. three goals three assists this season but you know what Theo he's come from nowhere a couple of years ago he was a forgotten player and he's come through and for me he's one of the best centre backs in the world and what I love about him he gets to 40 yards from goal and all the Chelsea fans are like shoot yeah he takes a shot every game but have you he's, noticed that he sometimes he, goes in which is brilliant but yeah. more than that he's an absolute brick wall of a centre back he's scary you don't want to deal with him in a back three he's going to be running at you and honestly if I was a footballer if there's one player I wouldn't want to play against it's probably Antonio Rudiger he will kick you to shreds he's had an outstanding season and as you mentioned not only for Germany and yes. uh, Germany have a great centre back in for Qatar because they're ready for that I've personally gone Thiago Silva though Oh. I know it's different. I think both Chelsea defenders deserve respect. You're talking about a Premier League team of the season. You've got to remember, this man is Brazilian. Yes. He flies out to Brazil every international break. He's 37 years oh. old. He plays in the hardest league in the world. With all that on his back, he drops masterclass after masterclass. Chelsea have had one of the best defences overall this year, and they both played a massive part. So we can't just speak about Rudiger and not talk about Thiago. 20 tackles, 81 clearances, 31 interceptions. Three block shots, zero errors led to goal. So all of you thinking that his age would get to him, it hasn't happened. He's been outstanding. And some iconic clearances off the line. Josh, throw a photo on the screen. Do you remember that one? I remember seeing that inside the stadium. I was like, how has he got there? That is true. And Thiago, can't wait to meet you in Qatar. And my other centre-back, it's got to be the brilliant Virgil van Dijk. One mm. of the best defenders in the world. Now, he went through a horrific injury last season and he's come back. And what a partnership he's got with Joel Matip there. Yeah, I think Van Dijk, the way he's bounced back is incredible. But I think we're going to have to go over to City for a centre-back position too. Everyone loves to mention him. It's the Portuguese centre-back Ruben Diaz, who plays next to Laporte. I've gone with the Spaniard. No way. Yeah. That is out there, Theo. It is out there, but hear me out. Everyone loves to credit Diaz, but what you've got to remember, he's been injured this season, okay? Laporte's played next to Diaz and Stones throughout the year. Always dropped a masterclass. 2.2k passes. That's more than anyone else in the league. He's the core of Manchester City's success, 
and he doesn't get the limelight like the other centre back. So I'm going to credit him. I tell you what, Theo, I like him a lot. You've been very left field yeah. there, but Virgil Van Dijk has to be in anyone's eleven. He does. He does. Van Dijk's had a good year. City are going to win the league realistically now. You've got to give him a centre back position too. And finally, right back, two goals, twelve assists, sixteen clean sheets. But more than that, this man has revolutionised what it means to be a right back. It yeah. is, of course, the brilliant, the one and only Trent Alexander. Arnold. He's a right back, okay, playing in a back four, okay, and he's first in the whole league for big chances created, second for key passes, first for assists. Of course we agree. He's outstanding and he's just getting to a new level every year. I feel like what he's developed more in his game is his defending side this yes. year. He used to get exposed a lot more than recently. So clearly there he's been working hard on the training ground to create the perfect modern day fullback and he smashed that. So he gets in our Premier League team of the season. No brainer. And now for the midfield and I've got to say at this point I'm going to cheat here Theo okay. because there's certain names I have to say in this video. Sure. And one of them 10 goals, 9 assists in the equivalent of about 20 games. He's been magnificent recently. Plays for Chelsea Mason Mount. Oh, He has been unreal lately hasn't he? Even I in the cup in Europe scoring important goals against Real Madrid, Palace, and overall in the Premier League season to get 19 contributions. He's not in my team, but I respect your decision. I mean, he has been rotated a lot, but he's turning into a sensational player. And I want to see him do this for the next 10 years for Chelsea and for England. Now, I've gone for a Chelsea midfielder too, but he doesn't currently play for Chelsea. Can you think of the name? Go on. Conor Gallagher. Of course. He's gone to Palace yes. on a one-year loan. Yes. He's come back with eight goals, three assists, a 61% dribble success rate, which is better than the likes of Son, Martinelli, players who play in more attacking positions than him. He's part of a Crystal Palace midfield and he's created so much for that side and helped Patrick Vieira have all sorts of successes, like finishing in the final four in the cup, but not just that, smashing it in the Premier League. They were odds to get relegated yeah. when he got hired. It's <sighs> unbelievable how they turned it round. You've got to give him credit. I think he will be a Chelsea midfielder next year, starting unless he goes for like 50 mil to Palace. <laughs> This has been his standout year and he deserves to be in the Premier League team of the season. And the next midfield position is centre midfield. And if you okay. don't agree here, I'm walking out of the room. Declan Rice, 23 years old, plays for West Ham. Every single year, Theo, he gets better and better. He's a magnificent player. I'd go so far as to say he could go to any team in the world. You'd pick him this season over Rodri. Yes. How's that such a quick yes? Jordan yes, Henderson? over everyone. I, I love Jordan Henderson. This guy is higher elite. In the league. These guys are higher in the league. They're more consistent. Well, Theo, maybe I not promise, more consistent. If you don't agree with me here, I'm walking out. Who have you gone for? Well, I've gone for Declan Rice. Yeah, thank you. Of course I have. He's, he's, he's a legend. I love Deckers. He's literally the GOAT, not just for England. He yeah. scores winners away in Lyon. Yes. You know, and then he's also running the Prem. I mean, he keeps the perfect balance of a holding mid-roll for passing and creation, but also the defensive work, the interceptions, the tackles. He is proving to be one of the best holding midfielders in the world, and I can't wait to see him on that flight in November to Qatar. Absolutely. The great thing about Declan Rice, he's English. He's not Irish at all, is he, Theo? And now for right midfield, Theo. And I love it when a player takes us by surprise. And yeah. this guy's a West Ham player. Nine goals, 14 assists and nobody saw that coming. I'm cheating. He's more of a right winger there, but I'm putting him right midfield. Jared Bowen. He's got to be in anyone's 11th season. Yeah, I don't season. care what anyone says. When a West Ham midfielder forward, whatever, 17 contributions in one year, you know, that's more than De Bruyne in yes. the season. Facts. He gets in this team. But hold on. We've just both given our final midfield position. There is no De Bruyne. What are we doing? Wow, surely not. Oh my goodness. Wait, are we going to get roasted? This guy's up for Ballon d'Ors. Forget the Premier League team of the season. We've had a howler. Do you know what? Kevin De Bruyne is one of my favourite players in the world. But there's been a lot of rotation. Earlier in the season, he yeah. missed a few games. He's magnificent recently. He's not in my 11. I think a lot of people that tune in just for the big games will see De Bruyne drop a masterclass and think, this guy needs to be in the whole season Premier League. That's wrong. If you actually watch the start of the year, he wasn't starting. Yes. Pep Roulette. And let's not forget that his contributions overall the season is lower than Bowen. It's nearly the same as a player like Conor Gallagher, yes. who, yes, has played throughout the season, but he's at Palace. And Palace and Man City, you're getting a different level of attacks, aren't you? So I think it's fair to not sneak him into that midfield to let the others have a name this season, you know? He's still up there. Obviously, he still deserves it. Yeah, sorry, Kevin. And now for the left wing, Theo. And I've okay. gone for a man six seasons running. He's got more than 20 contributions in the league 25 goal contributions yeah. this season. It has to be the brilliant Hung Min Son of Tottenham Hotspur. And I tell you what, his technical ability is amazing. His football brain is second to none. And yeah. if you watch him on the pitch, Theo, 
He's looking, he's like a chess player. He's looking six moves ahead. Actually, Dad, it's pretty simple. He's got one eye on Harry Kane. He's waiting for him to get the ball. And then he's absolutely sprinting down that left flank. 23 contributions in 29 games for Son. He's only three off Salah for the golden boot. Do you reckon he can catch up? Because recently, Mo's been falling away. Yes, I do reckon he can, Theo, because he's capable of scoring a hat-trick, which he did last yeah. week, and just a brilliant player. He's the boy on form, isn't he? And under Spurs right now, especially when they're running up the top four, I reckon he's going to rack up the contributions. 100% the left winger. We haven't gone for someone like, you know, Rafinha... You're no. not giving the space for that, Saka? No, not this season. I've not gone for any Arsenal players. Apologies for that. Think about Arsenal. You've got some good players who've yeah. come through this season. Saka, Smith-Rowe, Martinelli, etc. Harvey but Barnes. For Leicester, yeah. not quite there. No Leicester players. No, no. James Madison. Yeah, no they kind Leicester. of peaked too late, didn't they? Leicester they had, had a, a very average year. season, haven't they? They had a tough year. They're in the Conference League as well, which they're doing well in. Now, I'm interested to see, in your striker position, Dad, have you picked Harry Kane, his Tottenham buddy? Have I gone for Harry Kane, Theo, after that slow start? to the season only 12 goals all season for Harry Kane yeah I have actually really? because Theo I haven't may I point out I've oh. not gone for Harry Kane wow. and I love Harry Kane he's one of yes. my favourite footballers in the world yeah. he's literally like an idol to me but 20 contributions in a season is low for him the level of player that he is if he wants to be one of the best strikers in the world you've got to be comparing yourself to Benzema Lewandowski the list goes on this season you can't. You can't. Well, hold on a minute, Theo, because eight seasons running, he's got more than 20 goal contributions. I know, I know. 12 goals, 10 assists this season. What he's done this season, Theo, is reinvent himself. He's not just the guy who smashes the ball in, volleys it in from 8 yards, 12 yards, 16 yards, whatever. He's now an assister. He's a sub-assister. He's almost become like a, another Kevin De Bruyne. Mm. In terms of complete football players globally... He's one of the top five. But he hasn't been doing that for the whole season. He the hasn't, The first few Theo. months, he lacked that. And we're talking about a Premier League team of the season. So my striker is going to be Mo Salah. I'm Ooh. shifting him over because I need to create space for a right winger, which we'll get onto in a second. Mohamed Salah, his statistics are ridiculous. And I hope he's in your final position because this year, Dad, he's got 20 goals and 11 assists in 27 games. That's more contributions than games. Yeah. Liverpool are up for a quadruple. And Salah has played a massive part of that. The fact they can win four different competitions at this stage of the year... That's outstanding. That's more than City. Bayern are out of the Champions League. All these big teams are falling away. You've got Real at a late stage, who's at the next team to play City. Liverpool got Villarreal if they win that in the Champions League final. Salah could be potentially winning the Ballon d'Or with the amount of trophies and statistics he's bringing to the table this year. He's a magician on the football pitch, Theo. I would call him the best player in the world at the moment. But he's he's not absolutely on, on my team, right winger. Okay, okay. And that brings me on to my right winger, which is Bukayo Saka. Yes, okay. And I know you're going to hate at me, you're going to laugh at me, but I think, no. what, first of all, Arsenal deserved a space in the team. The way they've turned it around this year on Arteta uh, as a whole is incredible. Won the North London derby, had some incredible moments. And Saka, last year, 30 games, 5 goals, 3 assists. He's had 29 starts this season. He's already got 9 goals and 5 assists. Uh, 14 contributions, so that's nearly 1 every 2 games. And an Arsenal team that aren't scoring as much as the Cities, the Liverpools, yeah. the, you know, the ones that just go mad... He's played a massive role and under Arteta, he's exceeded and I hope to see continuous improvement from him, not just in the Arsenal team, but for England too. He was crucial at the Euros. He's proving to be a very good winger and he deserves to be in the team of the season. Theo, everything you said is correct. Yeah. He is a very good player. He's much improved. He's got very good contributions, but not for me, top yeah. 11. Now, interestingly, I think one Theo, of the two of us is fair. I, there's a lot of discussion. Maybe you could have played Rafinha here too. Not for me, no. Not lately. No, not, been good enough, not no. this season. You know what? I've done something called honourable mentions there. I, I know it's two. not in the script. But you've done yeah. it as well. Yeah, let's give three, yeah? Okay, well, I'm going to give five there. I'm going to okay, cheat. Yeah, five, yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you the five names. Yeah. Conor Gallagher, Bakayo Saka, Diogo Jota, Kevin De Bruyne, Jota. and Sadio Mane. Yeah, so De Bruyne is the absolute number one. Yes. In fact, he's in it. He's kind of, you know, in team of the year, team of the season, they drop a PL team of the season, they do a 12th man. Yeah. That 12th man, we can agree, is De Bruyne. Really. Yes. Like, the fact he's not in the team is just, we kind of want to give room to some yeah, new guys. Yeah, we do, yeah. It's kind of unfair. It's unfair at this point. <laughs> he's just too good. Um, our close nominees for me, Ward Prowse. Yes. Ivan Tony, and David De Gea. They're the three I've written down. I want to mention, yes. Ward Prowse has been outstanding and you don't always speak about him. Southampton have had a tough year. They, go, they bounce back and forth. Like they lose to Chelsea 6-0 and they go and beat Arsenal at home. It's like mental. But he's always consistent. Let us know where we've had a howler. I want to hear interest and discussion and I want to hear your team of the season. Name us a player in the comments below who deserves a mention. We may have not spoke about it, but we're not accepting that we're correct. So get down in the comments. Absolutely. And do not forget to subscribe and to like. And I mean you. And at this point, I'm on a flight somewhere. I don't even know. I'm probably not even on a flight. I'm kind of just a running joke at this point. So I see you in a bit. It's good to be sitting down with Dog Dad again, yeah. actually. It's been a while. So see you later.